we are now on the final and last topic of this week's lesson and we'll proceed with the radical expression or radicals. In radical expression, we will still begin with rational exponent, transforming exponential forms to radical form and the loss of radicals. Okay, let's proceed. First, let us learn how to transform exponential form to radical form, specifically when the exponent is a rational exponent. Okay, so this one here is a raised to m over n is your rational exponents written in exponential form. We're going to transform this to radicals or radical form, but first, let us identify the parts. Okay, as you all know, A is your base, and the exponent is made up of fraction which compose of the numerator and the denominator. It can be transformed to a radical form. This is your radical form. Let us now identify the different parts of a radical or radical expression. Now, from the rational exponent here, it will be transformed to the radical sign or radical expression. Your denominator becomes your index followed by your radical sign and the base and the numerator becomes your radical. Again, the index is your denominator followed by the radical sign, the base and the numerator makes up the radicand. The radicand. The radicand is what we call the term found inside the radical sign. The radical sign. This is your radicand. Okay? Next. Let us have our first example on how to transform exponential form to radical sign or radical expression. First, 2 raised to 3 over 2. Your denominator becomes your index. And if your index is 2, no need to write that. You can begin right away with the radical sign. Okay? Again, if your denominator or if the index is 2, no need to write 2. Understood that if you have the radical sign itself, it, there is an index of 2. And then your base is 2 and your numerator is 3 becomes your radical, the term found inside the radical sign. And this is not the final answer yet because your radican can still be simplified. And the final answer is this. The final answer can be read as or can be read as square root of 8. You'll begin with the value of your index. Again, if you have the radical sign, it means that there is an imaginary number 2 as your index. Again, this is read as square root of 8. Okay, let's have our example. 5 raised to 1 fourth can be written in the, form, in the radical form as, what is your index? Yes, that is 4, followed by the radical sign, then 5. No need to write the exponent 1 here because it's understood that there is 5 or 1 rather. Next, quantity 5a cubed b squared raised by 2 thirds is can be written in the form of again your index first which is 3 from the denominator and then followed by quantity 5a cubed b squared because this is your base followed by the numerator 2. Again, this can still be simplified giving you cube root of applying power of a product in the law of exponent 
As you all know, there is one. Let me write it for your better understanding. Then, 1 times 2 power to power is 5 squared. 3 times 2 is A raised by 6. 2 times 2 is B raised by 4. And the final answer is cube root of 25 a raised by 6, B raised by 4. Okay? And another example. Is we have the quantity 3 raised or over y raised by 5. Okay? This can be written in the form of cube root raised to or cube root of 3 over y raised by 5. Again, no need to enclose it with a parenthesis then write an exponent 1. It is they are just the same. But this expression here is not yet simplified, but we will still consider it as your final answer for now because simplifying because simplifying radical sign radical expression is on another topic. Okay? Next, let us now do the opposite. Let us now transform radical form to exponential form. Again, this is your radical form or radical expression. And this is your rational exponent in the form of exponential form. Okay? So, your radical sign is present. Your index becomes your denominator. And the radicand becomes the base and the numerator. Let's proceed with an example. So we have here square root of 3. And to transform it to rational exponent, what is your index? Yes, that is 2. That will become your denominator. And the base or the radicand becomes the index. Let me draw an arrow to illustrate. There's two here becomes your denominator. And the radicand becomes the base and the numerator. Further example for further understanding. So cube root of x raised by 7 will transform it back to rational exponent, copy the base and the numerator followed by your index. Another example, cube root of 4x squared will now have um, 4x squared raised by one third. Or you can simply say that 2x raised by 2 thirds. Why? 4 can also be written in exponential form and that is 2 squared, right? So since both of them now have an exponent of 2, you can factor it out and make it as your numerator. That is why the answer becomes... 2x raised by 2 thirds. Okay? I'm sorry, this is this should be. Good. And lastly, 4th root of xy becomes quantity xy raised by 1 fourth. Ma'am, can we write it without the parenthesis? No. Because if you will remove the parenthesis, meaning only y is raised by 1 fourth. Ganito po yan. Kung hindi ninyo isusulat yung parenthesis. 
Ibig sabihin, ito lang yung naka-raised by one-fourth. Ito lang ang nasa loob ng radical sign. Okay? Let me have another example. For example, you have 4 square root of x. Transform this to rational exponent, you will have 4 x raised by 1 half. Okay? Next. Let us now proceed with the different laws of radicals. From this lesson, we have 4 laws. And let's begin with this one. We will now consider that a letters or variable A, B, M, and N are all integers, meaning they can be positive, negative, and a fraction. Zero, that is, that is the restriction, especially in the denominator. Okay, first law is that if you have a raised to 1 over n raised by n, it means that is a raised by n over n, and that is equal to a. How does how did this one happen? Bakit naging a na lang? Because n divided by n, that's 1, giving you a. First example, cube root of 12 raised to 3. So, isusulat natin to interrational exponent. It means 12 raised by 3 over 3. Following this order, right? And that is 12. Pero ang pinaka shortcut niyan, all you have to do is to divide the new exponent by the index. That is why you have 12. Okay? Next. 6 a uh, cube root of 4 raised by 6. Follow what we did there as a shortcut. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Nawala na po yung index, therefore, wala ka ng radical sign. So, the answer is 4 squared. And the final answer is 16. Okay? Again, why does it become... 4 squared because 6 divided by 3, the answer is 2. The radical sign was removed because it was cancelled. Ang naiwan na lamang ay 4, then raised by 2. And 4 squared is equal to 16 because 4 times 4 is 16. Next, second law. Nth root of A times nth root of B equals nth root of AB. Okay? So we have here 5th root of 4 times 5th root of 32 is 5th root of 32. And the 5th root of 32 is 2. How did we get 2? Think of a number that when you multiply by itself 5 times, the answer is 32. And that is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. Therefore, 5th root of 32 is 2. Another example, cube root of 3 times cube root of 2. And your answer is cube root of 6. Okay? Next. Third law of radicals. Nth root of A all over nth root of B becomes nth root of A over B. So we have here this. Square root of 18 divided by square root of 2 or square root of 18 over square root of 2 can be written in the form of 18 over 2 following this law. Then, as you all know, 18 divided by 2 is 9. And square root of 9 is 3. Next, 4th root of 20 over 4th root of 10 is equal to 4th root of 20 over 10. And the final answer is 4th root of 2. Okay, 
fourth root of two is the simplest form is in the simplest form because if you will use a calcul you will get the value of fourth root of two as an irrational number or if you do not want to do this part here all you have to do is 20 divided by 10 that is two. okay and last law is if you have the nth root of the m m root of a is equal to let me write this nth root of m root of a is equal to m n root of a so we have here square uh, cube root of the square root of 64 okay this can be written right away as the sixth root of 64 okay but i know and the sixth root of 64 is 2 because you have to think of a number that when you multiply by itself six times the answer is 64 and that is 2 there is an easier way if you do not know how if you do not know the cube root, uh, six root of 64 there is another way let me show it here cube root of the square root of 64 means let's focus on this one square root of 64 is 8 so you only have cube root of 8 and cube root of 8 is 2 okay see different way but you still obtain the same answer and lastly square root of the fourth root of three so all you have to do is to multiply the indices so two two here times four and you'll have eight root of three and this is your final answer this is the end of our lesson for this week and i hope you are able to understand all of it and if you have concerns and questions you can always pm me via messenger and i'm very willing to answer all of your questions okay that would be the end for this week's lesson see you again next time Bye. God bless.